This is no one from nowhere, and you are, and I am, a spirit of God. Today I want to talk to you about Anunnaki alien gods, forgery of religion, and Nibiru. First a couple jokes. What is green and is Santa's favorite singer? Elf is parsley. <laughs> and what is a pirate and a hound dog's favorite song? Arr! <laughs> Did you know that the Anunnaki Elohim gods to Marduk is Yahweh, Allah, and Jesus Christ? Did you know that the Anunnaki control all of our three main religions and more? Did you know that Marduk is in charge of the Anunnaki? Did you know that Zechariah Sitchin said Marduk as Nibiru is a forgery? Did you know that the Anunnaki built the Tower of Babel? Did you know that this could be the reptilian Babylonian Brotherhood? Did you know that Marduk has ship as king of earth and there are seven gods that sit in his heavenly chamber and several other hundred Anunnaki Ojiji gods under him. Have you heard of the 50 names of Marduk? And are there any biblical parallels to the Unamalish Tablet 6 concerning Yahweh, Jesus Christ, and Allah? Today's video we will go through some very truthful words from Zechariah Sitchin whereas he states that Nibiru in the Unama Elish was one of the greatest forgeries ever. Let's face it, all life on earth was started by the Anunnaki gods. This led to a war called the Era Myth or Sodom and Gomorrah. Then from the myths of olden days of the Anunnaki Elohim gods, Marduk in Babylon re-indoctrinated his supremacy as king of earth and substituted his name, Marduk, for Nibiru. From this Tablet 6, he basically set up what David Icke calls the reptilian black magic Babylonian Brotherhood. And then, to the Illuminati from this, we find ourselves in Genesis, to Melchizedek, to Abraham, to Exodus, to the I am that I am, which is Yahweh to Jesus Christ, setting up the three mainstream religions and more, and the, ter and the term Jesus Christ, Yahweh, and Allah. As you will learn, no matter what type of spiritual energy you put out there, this all goes to Anu, equaling to the Anunnaki, at least according to these texts. In addition, to these texts, we will show some biblical references to the texts. So, that being said, have you heard of Nibiru as Madark, Marduk, king of the Anunnaki? Did you know that he received Enlilship, rank number 50? How does this relate to all religions, and do you think that this is a forgery? You be the judge, and as always, good intents only, and please leave your comments. According to the book Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets under Marduk, Babylonian national god whose legend strongly influenced Jewish ideas of Yahweh, Marduk claimed to have created the world by separating the celestial and abyss waters as did Yahweh in Genesis 1-7. And this coincides with Nibiru by cleaving the body of his mother Tiamat meaning all waters. Marduk also killed the firstborn king, Kingu, and created the first man from Kingu's blood. This coincides with Allah, whom also made man from the flowing blood. Marduk also inherited the sacred laws, or the Ten Commandments, from the mother goddess, who were supposed entrusted to Babylonian kings at the mountain of the Tower of Babel, Ziggurat. This tradition, too, was copied by the God of Moses. Is this enough proof? Let's go on. Although I greatly appreciate the Bible, we need to realize that this is a reproduction of the past Anunnaki myths and put this 
into your perspectives that alien gods called the Anunnaki started life on earth. Let's now read chapter 13 of Zechariah Sitchin's book, When Time Began, called The Aftermath of the Forgery of the Planet Nibiru and Marduk's, in which Sitchin states, Marduk instituted one of the greatest forgeries ever, the creation of a Babylonian version of the epic in which the name Marduk was substituted for the name Nibiru. Let's ask this question also, turn the, the, the law of polarity around. Did Zechariah Sitchin know this and make a success out of the lies? Because these gods are clearly from the Pleiades. Or is this a CYA? Cover your axe. <laughs> and is his disclaimer blaming Marduk? First, Tablet 6 9 from the Unama Lish. Marduk established the heavenly station of N E B E R U, not Biru, to fix the star's intervals that none should transgress or be slothful. He fixed the heavenly stations of Enlil and Ea, or Inki, with it, and gates he opened on both sides. The Aftermath To establish his supremacy on earth, Marduk proceeded to establish his supremacy in the heavens. A major vehicle to that end was the all-important annual New Year celebration when the epic of creation was read publicly. This also was a very big way to state and restate or reindoctrinate the basic religion tenets regarding gods and men. The epic of creation was thus a useful and powerful vehicle for indoctrination and re-indoctrination and as one of his first acts, Marduk instituted one of the greatest forgeries ever, the creation of a Babylonian version of the epic in which the name Marduk was substituted for the name Nibiru. It was thus Marduk as a celestial god who appeared from outer space, battled Tiamat, created the hammer bracelet or the asteroid belt, and Earth as Tiamat's halves rearranged the solar system and became the great god whose orbit encircles and embraces as a loop. The orbits of all the other celestial gods and planets making them subordinate to Mark Duke's majestic. And the ensuing celestial stations, orbits, cycles, and phenomena were thus the master works of Marduk. It was he who determined divine time by his orbit, celestial time by defining the constellations, and earthly time by giving earth its orbital position and tilt. It was he too who depraved Kingu, Tiamat's chief satellite, of its emerging independent orbit and made it a satellite of earth called the moon to wax and wane and usher in the months. And so, rearranging the heavens, Marduk did not forget to settle some personal accounts. In the past, Nibiru's home planet of the Anunnaki was the Adobe, or home, of Anu, and thus associated with him. Having appropriated Nibiru to himself, Marduk regulated Anu to a lesser planet, the one we call Uranus. Marduk's father, Enki, was originally associated with the moon. Now Marduk gave him the honor of being number one planet, the outermost, the one we call Neptune. To hide the forgery and make it appear as though it was always so, the Babylonian version of the epic of creation called the Unama Elish, after its opening words, employed Sumerian, Sumerian terminology for the planetary names, calling them Ninabud, the artful creator. And he is also called Lord Earth. Enlil was too omnipotent to be shoved aside. Instead of changing Enlil's celestial position as god of the seventh planet Earth, uh, Marduk appropriated to himself the rank of 50, and that was Enlil's rank. Just a rung below Anu 60, and Enki's numerical rank was 40. 
That takeover was incorporated into the Unamount Lish by listing as the last tablet of the epic the 50 names of Marduk. Well, actually was in the six, and we'll go over that. As ending with a new celestial name called Nibiru. With the 50 names, the last two verses of the epic stated the great gods proclaimed him was the title 50 and they made him God Supreme. An epilogue regarding this states, let them keep in mind, let the lead man explain them. Let the wise and the knowing discuss them together. Let the father recite them and import them to his son. So this is multi-generational we're talking. Marduk's seizure of the supremacy in the heavens was accompanied by parallel religious changes on earth. The other gods, the Anunnaki leaders, even his direct adversaries, ne neither punished them or eliminated them, rather joined them. And this gimmick of asserting their various attributes and powers were transferred to Marduk. If Ninurta was known as the god of husbandry, he had been given mankind agriculture by damming the mountain gashes and digging irrigation canals. The functions now belong to Marduk. If a dad was the god of rains and storms, Marduk was now the a dad of rains. This is a short list. Ninurta, Marduk of the Ho. Nergal, Marduk of the attack. Zababa, Marduk of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Enlil, Marduk of lordship and council. Nabu, Marduk of numbers and counting. Sin, Marduk the illuminator of the night or the moon. Shemesh, Marduk of Justice and the Sun, and Adad, Marduk of Rains. So many scholars have speculated that in this concentration of all divine powers and functions in one hand, Marduk had introduced the concept of one omnipotent God, or monotheism, to the biblical prophets. But this confused the belief in one God Almighty with a religion in which one God is just superior to the other gods, a polytheism in which one God dominates the others. In the words of the Unama Elish, Marduk became the Enlil of the gods, their Lord. And later, when he was in Egypt, called Marduk Amen Ra, the Unseen One. And this is where we get Amen. Amen Ra. A mid-video joke. What does a counterfeiter eat for breakfast? Corn fakes. <laughs> now let's get into the Unama Elish Tablet 6 and add some biblical parallels to further illustrate and illuminate this concept of fraud of the Anunnaki. Tablet 6. When Marduk heard the God's speech, he conceived a desire to accomplish clever things. He opened his mouth, addressing Ea Inki. He counsels that which he had pondered in his heart. Quote, I will bring together blood to form bone. I will bring into being Lulu, whose name shall be man. I will create Lulu man, on whom the toil of the gods will be laid, that they may rest. I will skillfully alter the organization of the gods and divide them into two. Ea Inky answered as he addressed a word to him, expressing his comments on the resting of the gods. Quote, let's one brother of theirs be given up. Let him perish that people may be fashioned. Genesis 127, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Let the great gods assemble and let the guilty one be given up that they may be confirmed. Marduk assembled the great gods using gracious directions as he gave his order. As he spoke, the gods heeded him. The king addressed a word to the Anunnaki, which is Melchizedek in my opinion, and this relates to Psalm 82.1. God has taken his place in the divine council. He presides in the great assembly of the gods and renders his judgment. Your former oath was true indeed. Now also tell me the solemn truth. Who is the one who instigated warfare? 
who made Tiamat rebel and set battle in motion. Let him who instigated warfare be given up, that I may lay his punishment on him, but you sit and rest. The Ajiji, the great gods, answered him, that is Luga Amengenki, or this is also called the 50 names of Marduk, the counselor of the gods, the Lord. Kingu is the one who instigated warfare, and Kingu means unskilled worker, who made Tiamat rebel and set battle in motion. They bound him, holding him before Iyanki. They inflicted the penalty on him and served or severed his blood vessels. From his blood, Ia Inki created mankind, on who he imposed the service of the gods and set the gods free. Genesis 2.7 Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. That task is beyond compensation or comprehension. For Ninamud performed the creation with the skill of Marduk. And Ninamud is the begetter of mankind, superior like Inki, and also known as Lord Earth. King Marduk divided the gods, all the Anunnaki, into upper and lower groups. He assigned 300 in the heavens to guard the decrees of Anu and appointed them as a guard. Next, he arranged the organization of the nether world, which can be in turn called where the souls go to hell or hell. In heaven and hell or the nether world, he stationed 600 gods. After he had arranged all the decrees and he had distributed incomes among the Anunnaki of heaven and the nether world, now this correlates to Melchizedek and getting paid tithes and 10%. Genesis 14, 18 through 20. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem and a priest of God most high, brought Abram some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of or tithes of all the goods he had received. The Anunnaki opened their mouth and addressed their Lord Marduk. Now, Lord, seeing you have established our freedom, what favor can we do for you? Let us make a shrine of great renown. Your chamber will be our resting place wherein we may repose. Let us a let us erect a shrine to house a pedestal. Let us impose where we can finish this work. When Marduk heard this, he beamed as brightly as the light of day or as the sun. Build Babylon the task you have sought. Let bricks be molded and raise this shrine. This is the Ziggurat Tower of Babel found in Genesis 11, called the Tower of Babel. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia, or Shiner, and Shiner means Anunnaki illuminated ones from Mesopotamia, saying, let's make bricks and harden them with fire and build a great city with a tower that reaches into the sky, and this will make us famous. The Anunnaki wielded the pick, for one year, they made the needed bricks. When the second year arrived, they raised the peak of a sagal, a replica of the Abzu, or Inki's E. Tenmak Inki, which is, in turn, they made a replica of Inki's home, called the Tower of Babel. They built the lofty temple of the Abzu, or Inki's home, where all three religions have holy water pools, and this is also relating to the primeval seas and the void. And for Anu, Enlil, and Ea, they established it as a dwelling. He sat in splendor before them, surveying its horns, which were level with the base of Asera. And Asera is another word for Nimrod or Nimrud, 
in Genesis 10 and the Table of Nations. He was the so-called builder of the Tower of Babel, later tore down by King Urshadon. And they com had completed the work of a sagel, or the tower. Genesis 10, descendants of Ham. Cush was the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia, or Shiner, in Mesopotamia. And question, what do the Illuminati have? Buildings, systems, monopoly, and key word, infrastructure. All the Anunnaki constructed their own shrines, 300 GG of heaven and 600 of the Abzu. All of them had assembled. Bel, or Marduk, seated the gods as fathers at the banquet in the lofty shrine which they had built for his dwelling, saying, This is Babylon, your fixed dwelling. Take your pleasure here. Sit down and enjoy. The great god sat down. Beer mugs were set out and they sat at the banquet. And interestingly enough, the Anunnaki gave beer to the Sumerians. <laughs> so after they had enjoyed themselves inside, they had a service in the awesome Asagel, or Marduk's Temple of Babylon, Tower. The regulations and all the rules were confirmed. All the gods divided the stations of heaven and the nether world. And the seven gods of destinies were appointed to give decisions. And like I said, Ninurta, Nergal, Zababa, Nabu, Sin, Shemesh, Adad, and also Enlil. And all these can be confirmed as Yahweh, Allah, and Jesus Christ. So Bel received his weapon, the bow, and laid it before them. His father, his divine father saw the net which he had made. His fathers saw how skillfully wrought was the structure of the bow, and they praised what he had made. Anu lifted up into the divine assembly. He kissed the bow, the bow saying, It's my daughter. Thus he called the names of the bow. Long stick was the first. The second was, May it hit the mark. And with the third name, called Bow Star, he made it shrine in the sky. He fixed its heavenly position along with its divineness. And this is accumulated to Senatar, the Sagittarius constellation, supermassive black hole, Milky Way teapot, Nergal, location of sun at winter solstice, and the galactic centers. And also the long stick can be assimilated to a barber's pole or the Omega Swan. The archer's knee is the Alpha Sigma is Nunki, associated with Eridu. Zeta is called Euphrates River. We have Delta, Eta, Pi, and Beta. These are sky eyes. And remember, King Anu created the universes. After Anu had decreed the destiny of the bow, he set down a royal throne, a lofty one even for a god. Anu set it there for, to, for the assembly of the gods. The great gods assembled, they exalted the destiny of Marduk, and did him well. They invoked a curse on themselves, and took an oath with water and oil, and put their hands to their throats. They granted him the right to exercise kingship over the gods. They confirmed him as lord of the gods of heaven and the netherworld. This can be accumulated to Genesis 9.16, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it. And remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. Ansar gave him his exalted name, Asula. And this is black-white magic. This means the illuminator of the path. He is the exorcist of religious rituals. Then it further goes down. Let him establish lavish food offerings for his fathers. Let him provide with their maintenance and be their caretaker of their sanctuaries. Let him burn incense or incense to rejoice their sanctums. Let him do on earth the same that is done in heaven. And this relates to Matthew 6, 9, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
All humans will be subject and take note and call on their gods. Since he's commanding them, they should heed their goddesses too. Let their food offerings be brought to their gods and goddesses. May they their may their shrines through the black headed ones worship someone and some other god. He is the god of each and every one of us. This is very important because no matter whom you worship, all energy goes to the Anunnaki gods, even if it's Yahweh, Allah, and Jesus Christ. And this relates to the I am that I am found in Exodus 3, 14 through 15. Moses asked Marduk, what's your name? God Marduk replied to Moses, quotes, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, and say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Do you understand? These are the Yahweh Elohim from the seven gods with Marduk's name on them. Interestingly enough, the umbrella is the Anunnaki and Marduk is Yahweh, Jesus, and Allah. So no matter what, you're worshiping them. Israel means Isis, Amun Ra, God, and Moses is Ankenaten, who is also known as Amun Ophis IV. In the sixth year, he changed his faith to become a worshiper of the solar disk of Amun Ra, Marduk, or the Eye of Ra. And this is sun worship, equaling to Jesus Christ is also sun worship. And he changed Amun Ra, or Amun Hophus IV, changed the faith of polytheism to monotheism, and he was hated for it, even to the point where they put his tomb seven miles back from the river to the city he built to decay and fall rapidly into ruin so that all the people could erase his memory. Another twist is that the negative attitudes towards Ankenaten, or Moses, were illustrated for, by example, and get this, inscriptions in his very tomb of the scribe Moses during Ankenaten's reign wrote in his tomb, quote, the time of the enemy of Ankenaten, who was Amun Ophis IV, whom is known to be Moses. But here a scribe named Moses is calling himself his own enemy. <laughs> I'm calling bull because you need to realize the depth and magnitude of disinformation for your own sakes. And anyhow, Amin Ra Marduk went on as business as usual. He is the son, S-O-N, the son, S-U-N, God of the gods. He is dazzling. And this relates to Amin Ra, Jesus Christ. Found in Matthew 27 or 46 and also Mark 15, 34, which, by the way, are purposely misspelled. At his death on the cross, Jesus called out, Eli or Elo or Elias who forsake him when he was crucified and this in turn means Helios which is a solar god meaning sun worship the solar eclipse at Jesus death hesitates of the light of the world and the sun as you went of righteousness were taken from Saturn cults in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea is there any biblical proof that Jesus' father was Helios, Saturn, the Son, or Marduk? Absolutely. Found in Luke 3.23. Ancestry of Jesus. Jesus was about 30 years old and he began his public ministry. Jesus was known as the son of Joseph. Joseph was the, was the son of Heli, or Helios, Saturn, equals son. This is clearly solar sun worship with Jesus, the sun in the middle, with his 12 disciples or 12 zodiacs or ages equals to 2160 years in each age and 25,920 years of a great soul or great year. You know why he was 30 years old when he started his ministry? 
because each zodiac sign is divided into 30 degrees, which in turn is 360 degrees, circling all 12 zodiacs or disciples. You know how many countless nights I stayed awake trying to see where Jesus the sun went? But then it dawned on me. <laughs> also, this was manipulated further in Mark 6.3. In this, Jesus was the son of Mary. So Asulu is the name by which his father Anu called him. And in Hebrews, this means Shalom or for peace be upon you. Islam is Shade, or the five pillars of Islam. And Jesus comes with the light with a sword. And Marduk is the light of the gods, a mighty hero. And with all due rights, they called his name Marduk, which is Yahweh, Allah, and Jesus Christ. Matthew 17, 2-3 Transfiguration of Jesus. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transferred so that his face shone like the sun, S-U-N, and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Moses met Yahweh. Elijah means messenger of God or Allah, and Jesus is the sun. Today I leave you with Deuteronomy 6, the greatest commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words I command you today. And be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and they shall be frontlets between your eyes or third eye. Did you know why Marduk, the son, never went to college? Because he already had a million degrees. <laughs> Only because you are, and I am, a spirit of God. Peace and love to you.